Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to a follow-up on Sunday's live stream. I uh, am so enjoying coloring this one that I wanted to continue on and uh, and bring you along on the journey for the rest of it. Uh, for those of you who know me, my name is Christine Aldridge. I am an artist. Uh, I do draw coloring books. And if you like what you see here on my channel, please do consider liking and subscribing and ring that bell uh, for, um, you know, so you don't miss any videos. We are working today in my book, 40 Fan Favorites, and we are doing a, a mandala and we're coloring it in Cali Art markers. And you can also, uh, if you would like to, Follow me on social media at uh, the following places. Uh, I had forgotten how much fun just straight coloring with embellishments is. And I, as you can see, I worked out a few of the details. I think we had only gotten as far as the center portions uh, on Sunday's show. And uh, so... I have uh, been putting my very cool um, pearl watercolor, pearl watercolors that I made myself uh, to work in some of this framing. I was um, uh, in the, all of the gold, and I think it is so pretty. So, uh, welcome to the show. <laughs> it's nice to have you. Uh, visit. For those who might not know, I did make um, some pearl essence colors. These are uh, watercolors of all sorts of different brands, but there are some pearl essence colors in here, and I made these from my Pearl X pigment powders. There is a video about that. I will link it right up there for you, uh, and I also have uh, some very cool new powders in uh, a lot of different colors, so I will be uh, over the next couple of months making up some of these into pearl watercolors and We'll test them out on other pages. Okay, just getting started. I just want to um, uh, just jump right in. I had, uh, I, I've got a whole pile of the markers that I'm using uh, out on my desk. So uh, these are the Cali Arts, uh, which are a nice budget-friendly alcohol marker. You can use uh, any markers that you like. This is a uh, Amazon published book. Uh, so the paper uh, is uh, is 60 pound uh, bright white and uh, my books are available at Amazon and then there are PDF versions available on Etsy as well. There are links below to everything. So um, the blues that I've chosen are these three, and in the Cali Arts, they are the B203, B204, and B227. So the 203 is the lightest, and I am working with the 204 uh, for this color that I'm working on right now, which is these little doohickeys right here. So how is everybody today? I hope that you are all well and that if you are suffering health issues that they are uh, behaving themselves. And if you are in pain that you are having a dialed back day. And uh, if uh, neither is the case and you just want to color for some relaxation um, and to help you get through it, then that is the best um, the best thing, the best medicine that I can think of. That's why I draw. 
I draw so that um, I can treat my own uh, depression symptoms and hopefully make something beautiful for the world and for you to color. And um, that is what it is all about. I have uh, no idea how many videos I've made. I've tried to make videos that concentrate on technique and uh, I've made some that are just simply coloring videos, but mostly what I am about is having fun. And that is what, um, that is what I want uh, all of you to get out of your coloring hobby. I want you to truly enjoy yourselves. And um, I think that is really what coloring is all about. It isn't about the finished product. It's about the journey and how you got there and what you were thinking and, you know, were you peaceful and joyous and hopefully stress-free and just putting color down on a page. That is, they don't have to be the perfect colors. Let the design work itself out. It helps. I am palette challenged, color palette challenged myself, even as an artist. So uh, it helps me if I just choose some color families and kind of maybe three color families, some blues, some um, oranges, some greens, a gold as an accent. And just use those, and if you do, I guarantee, I guarantee, yes, I guarantee, <laughs> that you will have a happy result. So it has been, uh, it is Tuesday here in the shop. I hesitate to say what day it is because very often I don't, um, I don't actually get to publish a video uh, in as timely a fashion as I would like to. And I always feel like I box myself in when I say what day it is I'm doing it. Um, switching to a lighter blue, and you'll see why here in a second. Uh, even though it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't read much lighter for the camera, but it is one step lighter than the other blue. Um, but I am simultaneously, right now what I've got going on in the studio is that I am simultaneously drawing for my next book, trying hard to put together a second volume of 40 fan favorites, which is fighting me psychologically. Uh, and I have my own reasons for that. Um, and working on two new books for artist Susan Curry, uh, who is drawing like, she's, she's drawing her books so quickly I can hardly keep up with her, but uh, I do her publishing for her uh, in getting her books ready for the publisher and doing all of the video work and the, um, uh, you know, creating PDF files for her and doing all of those things that, because uh, she's not as technically computer savvy as, uh, as I, I guess, as I am. And um, it's just easier for me because I have the software and I have everything already in place. So the whole mechanism in place to create books. But, uh, so it is both busy and, uh, and, and creative around here these days. I'm just trying to keep up with, with all of that. And I have, um, 
been visiting a lot of streams so far that, well, I shouldn't say a lot of streams. I visited two streams. Uh, on Monday, I visited Dee Dee Willingham, who is, I don't know, she's just a marvelous way for me to start my creative week here on YouTube. Always inspirational, always good visiting. And this is this is how uh, these things work. In Dee Dee's stream, I uh, met Janet, who is has a channel called Monkey Island Madness, and uh, who streams on Mondays after Dee Dee. So uh, you go over to Monkey My Island Madness, and of course the uh, the inspiration continues. They are two very different kinds of artists. Uh, and they approach art differently, but um, but Janet is a ton of fun, and she has a sidekick named Eileen, and together uh, they are absolutely hilarious. But and this is what I mean about how these things work. Uh, so I am watching Janet's channel a few weeks ago, and she mentions that her son has brought home the woman that he is currently dating to meet his mom and that she liked her very much and that they were discussing books and uh, that this uh, youngster, <laughs> we'll call her a youngster, uh, highly recommended a book to Janet called House of Leaves. Now, I had never heard of House of Leaves, uh, but apparently it uh, has been quite popular and so she not only did she recommend it to Janet, but she sent Janet a copy. So, now Janet is currently reading this book, and she says it's uh, it's challenging her intellect. And I think that that is, uh, and she says, it causes you to challenge both your intellect and your sanity. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm in, I'm in. I love books like that. Books that make you think, right? And so... Look what arrived today <laughs> via Amazon. Uh, I was able to get a copy of it from uh, uh, through Amazon, but I didn't have to pay nearly what uh, the original Amazon price was, which was for the paperback version, it was like $17. For the hardback version, it's like $50. Um but I got mine from the Goodwill of DC uh, as one of the alternate sellers on uh, Amazon. And I only paid 10 bucks for it plus shipping. So uh, it, is, um, it is very interesting. I sort of thumbed through it. It's got, it's, it, it's, part of what makes it so mind blowing is that there's tons of stories here. And um, somebody was trying to compare it in the back and forth of, uh, of whose voice is speaking at that moment. Uh, and they were stumbling over who they thought it was. And I think that maybe what they were thinking of is uh, Cloud Atlas. Remember Cloud Atlas? And that was a, a very interesting read. You had to definitely read Cloud Atlas more than once. It was popular a few years ago. So anyway, I've got this. I'm only as far as through the introduction, but already it is just so promising looking, and I can hardly wait to tell you about it <laughs> as the days go on. I'm trying to be careful with it, because if I fall off into a book, uh, you're likely not to see me again for weeks <laughs> while I digest it. I was that way with... Um, my favorite book of all time, which is Atlas Shrugged. I um, read it the first time when I was like 17, and I didn't really understand it. And I read it the second time uh, when I was about uh, 25, and I was hooked for life. And now I read it every other year. This, I've, now I've got my oranges. Uh, just for those who might wonder, this is the Y903. And this is what I love about coloring a mandala. Uh, and I, of course, work my mandalas into much bigger design pages. Um, 
but you don't have to think about the coloring. And this is what I love about uh, markers, too, alcohol markers. For those who know me, it took a long time for me to come to alcohol markers. But, uh, but now that I'm here, I have to say I love them. <laughs> I love the ability to just straight color and have fun with it. And I'm using three different colors here. So I base the three center ones and then make the use a different color to slightly change the color of the two to each side so that it more like gradiates out. Anyway, um, so that's been fun. And then uh, this morning I set an alarm because for the last two weeks I've been missing Sammy at Color and Chat with Sammy um, because I've been keeping odd hours uh, with all the uh, art stuff that I'm doing. And um, so I made sure to be there. But I guess what I missed really went on uh, in the very wee hours of the morning. <laughs> and that was a feature over at Belinda's channel that uh, featured artist Laura Rafferty and a drawing that she had done. And I guess it was just a giggle fest. So for anybody who might have, uh, have missed that, I encourage you to, uh, apparently it is a good laugh and uh, much giggling ensued. Uh, yes, I like that. And I guess, see, what else is going on? Anything? Can't really think of anything immediate. It was nice to see a lot of folks that are uh, there. Um, <coughs> and once again, to all those who may be ill, I hope you are very uh, feeling better very soon. Knocking on wood. It is, uh, I think I have made it all the way through the summer without so much as I had cold, which is yay. And uh, my friend Anne is healing after her fall, which is good. She got tripped up by her flip-flops, which has happened to me on more than one occasion. Of course, it usually happens to me here in the house. I went down hard the other day in, well, the other day. It was actually a few months ago now, between my desk and my desk chair. Thank goodness I had a nice soft pile of clutter <laughs> right next to me to catch my fall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Oh, and then I was uh, reading back uh, the chat in uh, Sammy's stream, and uh, they were talking about infectious giggles. And uh, thank you, Faith, uh, Faithful Mess, for, uh, <laughs> for saying that you thought my giggle was infectious. That was nice. Oh, I just laugh. I, I love to laugh at the world. If you don't laugh at the world, sometimes it will make you cry. So, learn to laugh, everybody. Learn to recognize that which is just funny in retrospect. Might not be funny in the moment, but it's funny in retrospect. I think we all get guilty of that occasionally. We take ourselves far too seriously. I know I do, occasionally. And, uh, let's see. Well, I can't really talk about the, the news of the world because it's <laughs> all too controversial these days. 
<coughs> oh my goodness. And uh, the news on color tube is almost the same. Always good, good. <laughs> always good subjects to avoid. <laughs> Who would have ever expected that in such a tiny community as we have in color and chat that uh, we would have so much, so much behind the scenes drama? But we don't discuss any of that either. So what does, oh, I know, I was going to, uh, I was going to ask you guys, I was trying to fish around for suitable talk topics to talk about the other day, and uh, I thought, what is the best vacation that you've ever taken? Um, you know, was it when you were a little kid? Uh, I used to go on driving vacations with my mother at, at the end of every summer, <coughs> or at the, sorry, at the beginning of every summer after tax season because she was a public accountant and so I remember all of those we used to drive up the coast to California and hit all of the sites you know we'd go to the Hearst Castle and in San Simeon and we would go to uh, San Francisco we'd start actually we'd start by going south because we lived in um, uh, in uh, in like Orange County, Southern California. So we'd start by going south to uh, SeaWorld. So we'd do SeaWorld and a couple of days in San Diego. And then we'd come up and do Marineland uh, and a couple of days in uh, like that part of LA. And then we'd go, you know, up the, up the coast in uh in spurts until we got tired and then we'd come home <laughs> or until we ran out of money and those were fun vacations uh this is just a uh g515 it's a nice pretty bud green i think is the name of it it says they do say on the side of them what the name is uh, grass green, sorry. So this is grass green. It's the same uh, color that I used in the little leaves and all of that in all of these little spaces. And, um, but then in later years, I, uh, you know, I don't, I don't remember, like, in my 20s, I don't remember taking any, what I would call, real vacations, because I was always a workaholic, so, uh, you know, if I did take a vacation, it was always a, a staycation kind of thing. I would stay home and, and just enjoy time off and, you know, maybe go spend extra time with friends, that kind of thing, stay out late carousing. Uh, so I don't think it was until my, probably my 30s, that I took my first real vacations. And um, the first one, <laughs> the first one that I took was my honeymoon. Yeah, that was not a vacation at all. We Why I agreed to this, I am never going to know. I honestly am never going to know. Uh, but I agreed to go camping at uh, Yellowstone <laughs> for my honeymoon. Now, I am not a camper. I am a glamper. <laughs> I, I like things like running water and, uh, you know, and clean. I, 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 I just... <laughs> I want a soft bed, and uh, and you don't get that camping out in sleeping bags in the national park amongst the 90 gajillion other people in the world, and especially not the year that we went, 
which was uh, two years after the big fire that they had in Yellowstone where so much of the park was burned. And, um, I mean, it was wonderful to see the park recovering, but it was still, I mean, it was still mostly standing dead, or, you know, maybe not dead, but uh, charred, really charred, uh, timber. And, uh, but there were some beautiful sights. The water, you know, the, the water features that run through the park are all just absolutely incredible. Really incredible. The power of that water is just awesome to behold. There is just no doubt about it. And, uh, but we also went to Jackson Hole, which was nice. And I would very much have liked to have spent some time in the Grand Tetons, which are so forbidding. You know, when you look at them, they are just such forbidding mountains. They don't invite, you know, they certainly don't seem to invite exploration. Uh, not like Yellowstone does, at any rate. But, so, to me, that vacation was torture. And the next vacation I took was to Hawaii. And that was, uh, that one was uh, interrupted by a hurricane, of course. Uh, and so we had a week of just super high humidity. It was September, so it was still off season. And because uh, that's when the prices were a lot cheaper. And I got hurt about two days in. I got rolled by a wave, and, uh, well, the first day I was there, I stepped on a sea urchin, and the second, <laughs> and like three days later, uh, I got rolled by a wave, and it threw my neck out of alignment, and that was like six months healing. I couldn't pick up a bag. I couldn't, couldn't do anything. It was just, it was all I could do to walk. So the first real vacation that I had that I actually could claim that I had tons and tons of fun was, again, a camping trip. But this time it was not with my ex-husband. It was with my new husband. And uh, this was uh, a few years later. And uh, I'm going to cover up this uh area here because I'm I don't want to interrupt the gold with palm of my hand uh, so this is the hyacinth purple it's R623 and I'm going to use it to do the little balls here the little pearls um, but now my uh, hus uh, the, my second husband, uh, the yeah, yeah my my second husband, the one I went to Yellowstone with. My first husband and I never had a never had a, a honeymoon, but my second husband and I is the, that's the where we went to Yellowstone, and uh, now he was uh, he was I call him my uh, my. He was my good, good, best-looking husband. You know, he was the best. He was gorgeous. He was six foot four, two hundred and forty pounds. Uh, you know, all muscle, and uh, and lovely to look at. But um, eventually, you had to have a conversation with him, and that wasn't always a very satisfactory thing for uh, for me. And um, but my uh, my third relationship, and we were never actually married. We were together longer than any than I've ever been with anybody else. But um, we were never officially married. He was a scientist. He was uh, he was not a geek, but he was not uh, you know he was he was not he was like 
five eleven and had a beard and uh, you know sort of reddish hair. He was a geologist. He was just exactly the way that you would expect an exploration geologist to look. You know, in very good physical shape because he was out hiking in the mountains with a rock hammer in his hand most of the time, but not you know not the not the 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 Superman kind, like my second husband had been, and uh, but he had been an Eagle Scout, and so when you went out in the woods or in camping in the desert with him, you felt safer than uh, you know than because he could build a shelter out of twigs and he could build a fire and you know with nothing more than a pocket knife or a Swiss army knife you know he could he could build you a house and make it warm and put dinner on the table you know that kind of thing and uh, so we decided that we would go camping on the North Umpqua River we were going to go what we decided was is that we would go whitewater river rafting and combine it with this, you know, sort of longer excursion. And we had friends who lived in Idaho, and uh, so we arranged to meet up with them, and uh, uh, we all went and met at Diamond Lake. And Diamond Lake, I believe, is in Oregon. I want to say it's Oregon, and uh, it's beautiful. It is the result of apparently it is a um, a volcanic a volcanic crater, and there is a lake at the bottom, but it is only visible uh, a few days a year because it is always so foggy there, and we. And that obviously has to do with the air temperature and the water temperature creating all that steam. And um, so we decided to take our chances, and it was May. For some reason, all my vacations always end up in either May or September. And it usually has to do with it being off-season. Um and so we met our friends and it was, nobody had really paid much attention to the weather report. So we didn't really realize that there was a storm front coming in until we woke up the next morning under six inches of snow. <laughs> so that was day one of the vacation. <laughs> Uh, our our tent was sagging quite uh you know quite a bit because there was snow build up on it and you, you know you go outside to to relieve yourself in the woods and there's six inches of snow so you've got to get completely dressed put on boots and everything else just to be able to track across to the bush. <laughs> Because, of course, we weren't camping in a campground. Uh, ay, ay, ay. <laughs> and I don't know. My my uh, my mind must have... I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, but I decided, okay, well, we're going whitewater river rafting, right? So I'm going to need, you know, something that's quick drying. It's going to get wet, but it's got to be quick drying. So I bought this ni nylon suit, <laughs> well, you know, pants and a jacket, and a tank top, and uh, you know, so I figured, well, I'll take the the jacket off, you know, when the sun is shining and it's warm, because everybody has to paddle, and you know, you don't want to get overheated and all of that. Well, of course, you know, the fact that I was the only one there in this sort of 
neon colored parachute fabric outfit. <laughs> Everybody else was wearing just, you know, long pants and, uh, and, well, or shorts actually. Most of them were wearing shorts and just t-shirts. Uh, and life jackets, of course. Um, because if you go with the tour, you've got to wear the life jacket. Which was good, but it was so cold. It was fun. I have to say that it was fun in the raft. Going down the river, it was absolutely fun. Because you were paddling and you were, you know, you had real pretty high anxiety. Because the white water is, you know, you've got tour guides who are, uh, you know, they're very, very good anchors in the boat and they know what they're doing. All you have to do is listen to them uh, and they will generally keep you out of trouble. But even they are not infallible and, you know, occasionally you would get wet. Uh, but at any rate, so at the end of day one, Everybody's muscles are fatigued, and if the temperature is dropping 10 degrees every hour, because yes, there's another storm front coming in. <laughs> and I might have told this story in my first series of videos. <clears throat> but I got, you know, after I got out of the boat, and I and my, my suit, to, to, you know, its credit, it did dry very quickly. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. But of course, your underwear and your, you know, your bra and your, your tank top and all of that, they're still wet. And so they're forming like ice around your body. And I got to the point where I was so cold that I could not get my clothes off <laughs> to change into something warm and get out by the fire and so i'm in the we are in this particular case uh because the uh the river people are smarter than uh i am <laughs> they their campgrounds or where they have us spend the night was in an official campground so there were uh there were bathrooms they didn't actually have showers but they were uh you know they, there were bathrooms with facilities and closed doors and things like that. So I'm in there and I can't, I simply cannot get my clothes off at all. And I can't, because I can't get them off, there's no use in putting the dry clothes on because they're just going to get wet. <coughs> and the air isn't warm enough for any drying to occur. And I'm in danger of becoming hypothermic is really what I was worried about. And, uh, I actually was probably hypothermic at that point. So finally, a girl stumbles into the bath bathroom, and she's very kind. And so she helps me get my top off and and uh, you know get my things undone and and helps me get into my uh, warmer clothes, which I'm eternally grateful for. I don't even think I remember her name at this point. She was not somebody that was with our particular tour. She was with another tour, but, um, you know, the kindness of strangers is really what that is about. And uh, so I did eventually get, uh, get warm <laughs> and got some hot cocoa. And I'll tell you what, those, uh, if you just, if you ever decide to go on one of those, uh, the tour people are really wonderful. They actually, the, your, your, um, your boat guide actually cooks, uh, and, you know, you, you get a hot meal, and, um, you know, it's not like you're there to fend for yourself. They really take care of you, and this particular one, I mean, this was 20 years ago now, but it was called the North Umpqua River, North Umpqua white water river rafting tour you know it's one of those kind of duh names 
very descriptive of what it is that they did. And uh, but it was to, I, I have to say it was just such fun. It really was fun. Once I you know once I got that retrospective look at it, I was not a happy camper that night. That night I was cold. But once you get a couple of beers in you, or in my case, a nice glass of red wine, uh, you know, you're okay. You've got a little, a little food, a little campfire, a little uh, wine to sip, good company, s'mores, of course, s'mores, because you have to have s'mores. Lots of chocolate, absolutely chocolate therapy. Uh, and then the next day you, you raft down the rest of the river and there is a, a truck that comes and picks up you and the raft and carts you all back to your parking lot where you left your cars that's like 20 miles back on the on the road and everybody goes home But, uh, and then, of course, we went and stayed with our friends in Boise, and we were there for a week, and that was nice. That is such a pretty town. It is just, Boise, Idaho is beautiful and, uh, and very uh, artsy. It is a very artsy town. Um, there is a big... Uh, like, you know, I hesitate to call them hippies because that's not really what they are. Uh, what what would we call them modernists, maybe? Or uh, very, you know, natural folks. Most of them, most of them wear beards and you know have long hair and hang out at the coffee house. Kind of thing. Okay, so that was a lighter yellow. This is a darker one. And this I'm going to go over with gold anyway. So, oops. That's not what I wanted. I'm missing something here. This is what it is. Okay, so I, the reason why I went over these with the lighter is because uh, I wanted to go over them darker with this Indian blue. And then it lets a little bit of that lighter bleed through. I discovered this accidentally when I tried to cover it up. When I uh, tried to cover up the lighter one with this darker blue. And so I decided to just keep doing it the same. Uh, but that was, that was probably the best vacation. Now he and I did take another vacation uh, with his uh, sister and brother-in-law but that one was that one was a little traumatic for me because uh, his brother-in-law was uh, not a safe driver in my uh, estimation he had wrecked his own car five times. Uh, he lived in Seattle. He'd wrecked his own car five times by tailgating too close. And I'll tell you what, I the only wreck I ever had in my entire driving career since I was 16 years old and I'm 60 now was uh, I have both rear-ended somebody and that happened when I was 18, and I have been rear-ended. Um, and both of those things make me a very cautious driver, and I have a tendency to put a lot of space between me and the car in front of me. Uh, so the fact that uh, my brother-in-law, my ex-brother-in-law, used to tailgate drove me crazy. And the fact that he wrecked his car five times, made me not want to get into a car with him. 
at all. And he sort of insisted on driving uh, when we went on this vacation in Hawaii, and I simply refused to get in the car. So it created a bit of stress, uh, and uh, my my uh, well, we'll call him my third husband, uh, for lack of you know, just for continuity. Um, I, you know, I, I, I said only only if Jim drives, only if he drives, and so. Imagine that my brother-in-law held that against me for the next several years. <laughs> and imagine how I didn't care. <laughs> it's my life, and no, I'm not taking it in my hands for you. <laughs> to appease your ego, buddy. Uh-uh. I'll go rent my own car, thank you very much, and I'll just follow y'all. So, but that was that was another trip to Maui, and you know Maui is a wonderful place to go on vacation. But once you've been there a couple times, it kind of makes you want to go somewhere else. I shouldn't say that. People who love Hawaii love Hawaii. Uh, and there's and I th I think it's wonderful. I mean, gosh. Somebody told me I could go to Hawaii tomorrow, I'd go. I wouldn't want to live there, but I'd certainly go on vacation there. But I think if I ever get to take another vacation, I want to go uh, someplace different, have a different experience. I've already experienced Maui. Maybe I'll go experience... Uh, uh, the Highlands. Ooh. How about the Highlands of Scotland? Never been there. Or, uh, let's see. Or uh, San Marie. How about San Marie in the British Virgin Islands? Or I could go to the American Virgin, Virgin huh? the American Virgin Islands. And I'm not sure how many, uh, I think, don't, some belong to England, some belong, or some are American territories, some are French territories, I want to say some are French territories, I could be wrong though, British territories. This is the other thing I love about markers, look, and they go so quickly. I just think that's terrific. Feels weird to stop talking like that. <laughs> All of a sudden, ah. I will say that Mount Haleakala, which is, um, uh, one of the reasons why we went to Hawaii was uh, Jim's niece was a, uh, she lived there and she was house-sitting. And she was house-sitting for this couple who had a beautiful home on the slopes of Haleakala. And uh, Haleakala, of course, is a volcano. And, um, and it has its own, I mean, it basically has its own climate. You wouldn't think that it would snow in Maui, but it does. It snows on Mount Haleakala. And uh, and I know that because it snowed when we were there. Uh, but you can go up and actually, uh, you know, look at the volcanic crater. And uh, it has, I think, has Haleakala erupted in the last bit of time? I don't think so. I think only uh, the island, the big island has, has an erupting volcano. How cool is that though? Getting to watch, you know, a continent being made. 
or not maybe not a continent, but certainly a, you know, certainly watching the land mass that is that particular island of Hawaii grow. Ew. Something on the edge of that. I like it from a purely scientific point of view. You know, it's like watching. I feel badly for all the people that are losing properties and things like that, but it's so cool to watch a, a you know watch the land rising like that out of the ocean. So I'm putting this base color down so that the gold, you know, if it doesn't cover completely, it'll um, actually show through. The gold will show through. And this is the lighter of those two yellows, just in case anybody wants to know. I'll take a pause for the cause here and be right back. And that is so funny. While I was uh, while I was on that break, I stopped into Google and I uh, looked up Hurricane Iniki, which is the uh, hurricane that hit Hawaii, because I wanted to find out when I had gone there. It was September 5th. It formed on September 5th of 1992, and um, lasted to September 13th, and it actually. I want to say that my vacation was September 12th, um, but at any rate, it uh, we were scheduled originally to go to Kauai, not to Maui, and um, it actually it it uh, it hit Kauai, and um, the hotel that we were. We were actually rerouted to Maui between the time that we took off and the time that we landed. Um, they had the whole tour had, uh, or, you know, I say tour. It was a a package vacation included hotel and car and you know airfare, hotel, car, the whole bit. Um, the tour had uh, or the package had actually changed us over everything to Maui. Because you couldn't get on to Kauai. They had actually had to, um, uh, I mean, all the hotels had to, to, um, had to sort of freeze in place because they no longer had running water. Um, our understanding was is that as they were moving people off the island of Kauai and onto Hawaii or onto, you know, other islands, um, that the hotels like people in order to be able to flush toilets and things like that, they had to, they were given buckets and they had to go get water out of the swimming pools at the hotels uh, so that they could flush their toilets and do things like that. Um, so yeah, it was a, it was a big mess. <laughs> that Hawaii, that, but it, it, the reason why I even thought about that is because there was a tie in between that Hawaii trip with my second husband and the um, the trip to Boise, Idaho with, we'll call him my third husband, even though we were never actually married. Um, and that was uh, when I'd gotten rolled by the wave. Um, there were I, We went to a beach uh, in Hawaii that was... Um, it was designated as a surfer's beach, and there were huge breakers. It was off the north end of the island, and um, there were huge, huge waves and huge breakers. And I was just doing a little, you know, a little body surfing, and but the red flags were out, and I should have known better. And the guy had said to me, the lifeguard had said, please be very careful. And I turned my back on a wave, and um, I didn't time it right, and it swept me, literally swept my feet out from under me, 
sucked my feet out and um, flipped me over in the wave and slammed me back down on the um, on the ocean bottom on my back and that's what screwed my back up so I crawled out of the water and you know the lifeguard comes rushing over and I was actually able to get up and walk and do all of those kinds of things it wasn't really until the next morning that I realized that I had I had seriously uh, hurt something whatever it was uh, and it, it hurt for the next several years until uh, with husband number three I went on vacation to Boise Idaho and now I'm just using the darker gold in these um, areas and while we were there one of the things that we did was go to a street fair or not a street fair but a um, it was like a craft show arts and craft show that was set up in one of their parks and it was a weekend event and uh, the reason why we went well because a it was a craft show and of course you go to all craft shows right <laughs> I don't know about you, but I do. <laughs> if there's a crap show and it's in my area, I'm going to go. Um, and uh, while, I, oh, while I was there, I got the coolest uh, ceramic bowl. It w It's purple, and it's one of my favorite things. It's one of those things that, you know, if they ask you as you're decluttering your house, does this bring you joy? Yes, it brings me joy. Every time I look at it, it brings me joy, so it would have to stay here with me. Um, but um, the the folks that we were staying with, um, he was a lawyer, and uh, his girlfriend was a, a massage therapist, and so she worked for a uh, massage. Um, uh, what do they call it? Uh, uh, you hesitate. You don't want to call it a massage parlor because that's not really what it is. She uh, worked in a massage therapy uh, facility and one of the people that she worked with, uh, or actually the, the massage therapy company, had set up uh, tents to do massage therapy at the street fair. That's what I wanted to say. Or at that craft show in the park. And so we went there to visit a friend of hers to that particular um, thing. And he took one look at me and said, sit down. Because <laughs> he could see I was in pain. And so he felt around back there in my neck and, uh, and down my spine and, uh, you know, kind of, said hmm and uh, massaged a particular little area and then um, and I, I felt something sort of pop not not pop like you know like a misplaced something but more like something relaxed and he said you know he said well I don't know if that'll help or not but it can't hurt so it happened that we went on the day that we were leaving and I was driving, um, we would drive in shifts back to Nevada, which is where we lived. And the longer I was driving, the more it felt like electricity was running up and down my back and it felt really good. And do you know that I have never had a problem with my back since? Whatever it was that he did, it worked. And um, so I that then caused me, because a lot of, uh, of J.D.'s family were involved in massage therapy, and um, so I asked his sister, uh, I said, how long can a muscle stay twisted? You know, if you have a cramp in a muscle, how long can it be, stay twisted? And she said, uh, well, basically, until it, get, until it gets untwisted. <laughs> so 
i.e., a long time. So could you imagine having, like, have you ever, have you ever had a calf cramp or a, the worst, the cramp in your shins? <gasps> oh, my goodness. Talk about get you out of bed. A cramp in your shins will do it every time. Um, but so uh, as nearly as she can figure, that has to be what it was. That I had a muscle that had cramped in my back and it just would not let go. And whatever it was that he did caused it to actually, you know, the blood to start flowing in it again, right, and caused it to relax. So I don't know what it was, but I was forever grateful. Okay, now, um, now for the gold, which is so cool. Let's grab, the, and this is the one I'm using right here. And um, see if I had the presence of mind to keep out the right. brush that I was using. No. Apparently not. Oh, it might have been this one. Is it this one? No. Yeah, no, it's definitely not. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh dear, I have a bunch of fine point brushes. So let me grab them out. These are my detail brushes right here. I think it is this one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's this one. Okay, now some water. I do have some water. Oops. Grab. Okay. Just getting all my all my little ducks in a row, so I can. Uh, oops. Actually, I found that this works much better. Just. Throw a little water in there. Uh oh. Be careful about dripping it everywhere. Let's see if I can. Should have done all of this off screen, but that's okay. So these were really easy to make. Um, I just looked it up on YouTube. Of course, if you've got the Cola Rose, or the, um, or if you've got a Posca pen, or uh, you know a glitter pen, or something like that, that you um, you know you don't have to have um, you know watercolor paint or whatever. This is just what I have, and I wanted to try it. Um, and of course, if you don't want to do glitter, or you know, you could do glitter, you could do stickles, you could do whatever it is that floats your boat. I'm going to start by doing just the inside of these little doohickeys right here uh, for the time being. I wanted to catch the lower edge of these since I didn't do a very good job the first time. Um, and uh, Uh, you can, you know, choose not to do it at all, which is perfectly acceptable as well. And I probably uh, should wait to do this as a last step, you know, do the whole page. But I kind of want you to see it and, um, you know, and then we'll see how the, how the video time goes. I suspect that this is going to be a, a long one if I try to actually finish it. Um, yeah, so I was thinking the other day that I, you know, I've been doing so many technique videos that, that it is a good idea to just do some nice 
relaxing, you know, accessible coloring. Easily accessible coloring. And that is what I, I like to think my art is about. It is about um, accessibility. You don't have to be particularly good with colors. Um, or anything like that. Just color in the spaces and it will give you a beautiful result. And if you are like me and um, I have a tendency to not, uh, it isn't that I don't think I can color people, I just don't want to. <laughs> Doesn't mean that I think that, you know, all the beautiful artwork out there that has people or features, you know, pretty girls and stuff like that isn't beautiful. It actually is. And, but sometimes you just want to not think about your coloring. Just do it for the sheer pleasure of putting color on the page <coughs> and then embellishing it. So I, uh, because this is the, um, you know, this is not watercolor paper. I do have a card stock behind it and, um, you know, with a plastic sheet. And um, as long as you're very light with your touch, you're not going to, um, you're not going to cause damage to the page. I'm going to try and work the, I have to work from the outside of this. So I don't end up putting my palm on a part of it that um, causes the, the um, Perlex to, it, it shouldn't lift off because it's got what's called gum Arabic uh, in it. But it it could, and so I don't want to I don't want to rub on it. Is what I'm saying. And if you've got a if you don't have a super fine liner brush, then I would suggest um, going the gel pen route or something like that. But if you have one of these little tiny brushes, and these are not super expensive, you can usually pick up you know some nice Teclon brushes over at uh, Walmart for, you know, like four to six dollars for a package of them kind of thing. These are actually model brushes that are made to um, paint, you know, for people who do uh, painting on <coughs> model cars and stuff like that. But they're perfect for doing the fine details in coloring books. And I have them all the way down to where they're like, you know, two hairs. <laughs> so you could do super fine lines with those. But I just love a bit of glitz. Glitz and glitter. And it doesn't take very much. I like it. I like it a lot. Ooh, look at that. That's so pretty. And now I'm going to start at the top up here. Kind of go across and around, try and keep my hands out of the, um, actually I think if I do it like this I can do it without the card. So I have to work my way over this sort of hump that's here in the center, but steady hand, and if you just do little strokes, and you know instead of trying to do a Instead of trying to do like one long sweeping stroke, 
it's easier for me at least to stay in the lines if I do a little little short strokes concentrating And if something like that happens, you've got a couple choices. You can you can take a dry brush. So if you've got a dry brush handy, you can just sort of push it back a little bit, lift it off, or you can just leave it alone because you know what? Only you know it's there. Believe me, nobody is going to pick it out and say, oh, you went over the line by a hair. You know, the width of a hair of your brush. Or in that case, two hairs. <laughs> so I will say that this part takes a little more concentration. So if you... It's hard to talk and have a steady hand at the same time. <laughs> a bit like trying to walk and chew bubble gum. We can all do that, can't we? Uh-oh. Yeah, that one got a little out of hand. But shh, only we know it's there. No one else will ever know. Okay, whoops. Now that one, unfortunately, I am going to fix. Or maybe not. Maybe I'll just leave it. And maybe I will fix it. Um, okay. Let me wash off the brush. Catch as much of that as I can. And I'll see if I can't remove some of the paint. Once again, I am the only one who knows that I went a little bit over on that line now that I've taken it out of there. So, as you can see, this is uh, basically, you know, all that I am doing uh, on this. And Just going, you can just go in between, just use the tip of your brush. Okay, that's enough technique talk. Just do it however you want to do it. Or don't do it at all. Or use a pen. Beautiful glitter pen would work for this. Posca, um, stickles, any, anything like that. The Cola Rose, any of the other metallics. Okay. And uh, I will just continue on around. And I will do that part probably off camera. Um, this video is probably running a little bit over an hour. And um, so I'll do that. And then maybe I'll bring back a part three. And we'll finish this up. Because uh, I have some ideas. I want to use the gold as a background on these bands. Uh, I'm not sure what I want to do with the butterflies yet. But we'll find out on the next video. Until then, thank you everybody for um, 
joining me and watching this one. And I hope that you enjoyed the story. I had forgotten that when I first started doing videos, one of the things that uh, people liked a lot were the fact that I was <laughs> that I would just sit and talk about the stories of, that have happened in life and, you know, keeping it real uh, and all of that. And I'd like to kind of get back to that with some of these videos. And hopefully you like it too. Please leave me a comment and let me know uh, what you think. And until we meet again, as ever, please color something pretty. Bye, everybody. Thanks for being here.